Hi, good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you happen to be watching this. So today's practice is going to be quiet and mellow, um, and hopefully experienced as nourishing and fulfilling and um, calming uplifting, soothing, that's what I'm after. Um, if you have a bolster, please grab that and a blanket. If you don't have a bolster, a couch cushion or two can work. Extra blankets, better if they're firm blankets. Um, and a belt for sure, and uh, maybe a block or two. And. Um, Starting out with your bolster lengthwise on your mat, depending on how tall you are, you might need to put a block at the end of that bolster because I'd like to have head support and the whole body, spine, hips on the bolster. So then sitting with your bum, your hips on the bolster, I'm going to use a belt to keep my legs, which will be extended, to keep them from rolling into external rotation. I don't need personally to hang out in unsupported external rotation. Uh, and how do I know that? I, I know my hips, I know my body. Um, my legs tend towards external rotation and I need to cultivate more neutral or internal rotation. So if you have any doubt, or if you just want to try, or you know, um, a loop that's hip width or wider, and simply catching the outer feet. Now some people, when they hang out in this shape for a while, they feel some heaviness or strain in the backs of the knees. I don't get that. My legs do not hyperextend, they hypoextend. So this unsupported dropping of the knees is good for my body. If you already have a really mobile knee joint, the kind of knees that sort of sway back when you hang out standing with finger quotes, locked knees, then you might put a blanket roll under your knees just to keep them from being unsupported in gravity's pull. Come to lay on your bolster, so head is supported, maybe a little bit tipped towards the body, like the brain is bowing, doing a pranam to the heart. Hips on bolster, so there's this slight downward incline to begin with, and I'm going to have you simply cross your forearms on your chest in a way that is relaxing. So if you have to hold your arms there to keep them from falling, then cross them further over your chest. You might even sort of drape them on your face. The whole point of propping, resting, landing the arms on the chest is to invite the tops of the shoulders to move back towards the earth, back towards your back body. And give yourself a moment to land to make sure that everything feels okay for the moment, right? Often we can find, often not always, we can find a relatively comfortable starting point. That's ideal in this context of sustaining a shape for a long period of time. And once everything gets quiet, listen to that soft voice of your breath. Just like you're eavesdropping on a quiet conversation, 
between two best friends or two lovers or two adoring siblings, some sweetness and connection and overhearing the relationship. Two lungs, right lung, left lung, that take up almost all of the volume inside the ribs. The heart takes up some space. There's some major blood vessels that take up space. And there's a, a place between the lungs and above the heart called the mediastinum up from above the heart and the hilum between the lungs. So wander your awareness, just meander the mind along the inside of the ribs. The sliding surface between the ribs and the Pleura, or the sac around the lungs. Each organ has like its own little sleeping bag, its own little protective sac. And then fluid, and then the organ itself. And so can you relate to, feel into the liminal spaces between ribs and pleura, and pleura of the lungs and the fluid around the lungs, all the way around the lungs. And then the lung tissue itself, each little microscopic breath sac, clusters of them like broccoli. Through the full depth and width and expanse of your ribs. Slowly filling to capacity, slowly filling to capacity. Switch the cross of the forearms. and slowly emptying to complete, complete exhale. And somewhere in the middle of it all, maybe veered off a little to the left is the heart beating away. You know, the heart came online when we were growing embryologically. The heart came online long after the blood was moving. The blood was moving And the movement of the blood became such a force. And the swirl and the spin, the circulation of the blood in our growing tissues became such a force that it formed the heart. So how our blood flowed, shaped our heart. And it still does to some degree. Hearts can be bigger or smaller. They can get too big if they have to work too hard. So land in the middle of that heart space and invite a gentle, steady rhythm as a easy baseline to the melody of the breath. And let that serenade you here. Take your 
two arms straight up to the ceiling. Palms face each other and then begin to reach the elbows a little wider than the hands so there's a soft curve to each arm. Tracing with your mind the curve of each arm through the arm bones to the shoulder sockets which connect the arms to the shoulder blades. And can you feel, find with your mind, your shoulder blades? Keep the in middle fingers, your middle fingertips, your longest fingertips touching like you're holding a ball. And can you take that ball four, six inches over to the right? And so left shoulder blades are going to slide away from the spine and around the left ribs. Squeeze right shoulder blade to spine. Don't tip your torso though. Torso heavy, just shoulder blades and then swing the imaginary giant ball you're holding to the other side. So left shoulder blade squeezes to spine, right shoulder blade wraps up and around. Ribs don't change in theory. And again to the right. So can you feel your shoulder blades and the arms sort of slinging around? right to left without changing the shape of your ribs or your spine. That's a worthy exploration. So if the answer is like, no, I sure can't. Let's see what we can do if we bring the movement closer to the shoulders. So hands, one hand on each shoulder, one hand on each shoulder, and then wrap the two elbows towards each other. Feel the shoulder blades go wide. Wing the sh elbows away from each other, and as you press them back towards the floor, squeeze the two shoulder blades together. So in theory, again, shoulder blades are doing all this movement. And then circling the elbow tips towards each other, down in front of your lower sternum, and then elbow tips maybe touch as you swing them up towards your feet, and then open them up again and out back and down. So big shoulder blade, big elbow circles, big elbow circles to swim the shoulder blades around. So ribs heavy like a wet blanket and shoulder blades like little spatulas scooping around, sliding around, slipping around. Reverse your circles. So you would have more sensation of movement in the back body than stretch in the front of the shoulders. Ideally, you might still get some stretch. I don't love that word, but it resonates with a lot of people. And then the next time the elbows come up, take the arms up again, soft elbows. Stay relating to shoulder blades and then start to open the arms out to the side, slow and slow, connecting with feeling with shoulder blades. So pause with the arms almost on the horizon, like elbow straight out to the side, but the hands are a little higher. There's a soft curve in the arms. And if you do a slow-mo, almost like a flap of the arms, but not really, little more to ceiling and then a little more to floor by way of shoulder blades sliding away from each other and then towards each other and then shoulder blades away from each other and then towards each other and so if any part of your arm touches the floor first it's the elbow first it's the elbow so pause there and if the elbow doesn't get there, then squeeze shoulder blades together more and poke the elbows back. And then eventually, maybe elbows still on the floor, forearms, wrists, hands, some of your knuckles maybe. And then send the breath straight forward through the chest, the breast tissue, the chest muscles. It's 
Send the breath forward and up under your collarbones. And send the breath also down and back to your kidneys. I like to breathe collarbones to kidneys. It's a diagonal upper front to middle back. Stay with this. Slow and steady the breath. Real slow and steady. So the breaths might be big, but the breath is not fast. And can you feel where the breath enters? Obviously, hopefully, obviously, the nostrils. But that's just flesh on the outer face. Can you find the actual opening into the skull behind the nose, which is way up towards the space between the eyes? Not quite that high. But the opening for the nose is much higher than the nostrils. So can you find, they call it in yoga, the nasya mula, the root of the nose. It's the top of the nose, not the nostrils, but up higher. And if you pull breath in through there, how does that change your experience of breathing? Any kind of fluid, actual water or fluid or even gas, air as a fluid medium, you know, space, it's, it's not nothing, it's got substance to it. But anything that flows in a stream, air current, wind current, water current, breath, spirals. It all moves in a spiralic fashion, even the water through your pipes in your house the blood in your veins spirals. Can you follow the spiraling breath along each side of the septum and the vomer bone in your nose? Down into each lung, spiraling down through each leg, out each arm, polishing. Creating a clearing of the psychic residue of any fatigue or anxiety or depression. You don't have to believe it, just invite it to be true. Let's keep that. Slip your feet out of the belt if you're using it. Feet on floor, knees bent. Float the hips up a little bit and can you slide the pelvis to the left some? So you can roll onto the outer left hip, keeping the hip on the bolster. My feet are staggered, they're about hip width apart where they started. I just moved the pelvis to the right to roll onto the outer left hip. And so now what you might find yourself experiencing potentially is some extra lengthening right side, outer right hip. You could maybe stack the right knee, right foot on left. That'll make it a deeper twist, probably in more sensation along the outer right hip. But ideally the right shoulder has stayed heavy. So if the right shoulder is floating, maybe stagger the feet again so you have a little more weight to the right. And I invite you for about two and a half more minutes to imagine yourself breathing just through your right nostril. Envision it, invite it, cultivate the intention to just polish the right side. 
And I'm using the word polished because um, not like you're actually getting out some polishing rags and polishing um, solution other than your intention, right? In yoga, it's to purify. To bring a luster. They call it shodna. To shine or polish or purify. So spiraling the breath all along that right side and overlaying with your mind because the nervous system, the endocrine system, our lymphatic system and our fascial system. Sometimes it's called the immuno nervous system or something like that, all three together. Responds to intention, responds to thought. Body and mind are not connected, they're the same. Feel yourself. And call on pure white light or cool blue light or a cleansing stream of consciousness, visualizing riverbed and a stream down the right side. The truth is, of the matter is we're always cultivating some kind of internal reality or always shaping our relationship to reality. So we're already, whether we know it or not, creating a reality internally. And it may have nothing to do with what's going on in the reality outside, right? So we may as well create one inside that meets with grace and acceptance and inclusion and compassion what's already here. Couple more right-sided clearing Soothing, spiraling breaths. And then if you did stack your knees and feet, float that right foot up and over to the right a little. Swing your knees up. Shift your hips back to the middle of the bolster. Pause. Any knee waggle or extra movement to settle is great. And then... Pick the hips up, send them to the left, and then tip the knees to the right. You can keep the feet staggered, and you might at first, because the second side has the unraveling of the first side to deal with, plus its own karma. Right? So, second side needs a little more understanding. Sort of like your second child. <laughs> I know the middle sibling in my family, love her, had her own special karma. Left leg might stack on right leg, might not. And then please purify and polish your left side lung, left side body, spiral that breath down from left nostril to left toe tips for about three more minutes. Now I have more congestion on my left side these days. It was not always the case. It used to be my right side. 
So just to give you an example, I feel behind my low back ribs on the left side, low back on the left, and I can't get breath in there. It's too congested, the muscles feel a little tangled. So I'm gonna concentrate my flow, my spiraling breath like an expanding Oh, I want to say tornado. That sounds a little violent, but like an expanding wind tunnel in my back left rib area. And I'm just going to focus on movement there with breath because that's where I feel none. So engage in that way. Curious, caring. You have care. You care about what happens. The intensity starts to ramp up, perhaps. Left chest, left shoulder, outer left hip. Can you stay with the feeling of clearing and loving and purifying? It's a little micro experience of the big picture. Stay at home, shelter in place is, for some, getting harder, clearly. But it doesn't mean that we don't keep doing it and find ways to do it more skillfully, more helpfully. Careful, the dualistic mind of hope and fear doesn't capture your efforts and keep you small in some sort of identity project, right? This isn't about that. This isn't about necessarily making your body healthier or more fit. It's about the ability to meet situations just as they are with all the power of clarity and compassion you can muster. The convenient byproduct is healthier, happier being in theory, but that is not the goal. If you're doing yoga, if you're a spiritual practitioner, mm -hmm. the goal is that this work is in the service of everyone, of all beings. And then gently, when you're ready, step the left foot a little to the left, swing the knees up. S center your hips on the bolster. Stretch your legs long and actually sort of squiggle your hips down onto the floor. Sit right up in front of your bolster. Legs straight out in front of you. And then take your time to slowly come forward. I'm actually going to belt my feet again so my legs don't turn out. And I made the belt loop a little narrower. You've got the bolster and blanket behind you within reach. You could lay it in front of you if you need support to come forward. I'm simply going to put a block between my knees or between my shins so my head can rest. And once again, connect to the, the portal through which the air actually moves into the skull. And send the looping, spiraling currents of breath down and wide to spread the fabric of the kidneys and the back and each side of the rib cage opening like a fan 
old school fans that spread open. Handheld fans. And invite the stream, the rivers of the backs of the legs to flow without obstruction. So if you sense, no doubt you do, and maybe it's not in your legs as much as it is your buttocks or somewhere else, but wherever you feel the most congestion, like dried, hard soil of the earth, can you irrigate with the rivers of breath? And somewhere in there is the quiet, soft beat of your heart. Can you make space to listen for that too? Listen to breath, listen to heartbeat, listen to the tissues, ask for oxygen, ask for blood, ask for freedom. And please respond to those requests by engaging, engaging, engaging. And if one is engaging skillfully without expectation, without anticipation, unconditional engaging, a story of yoga says, and I've experienced it to be true, that any boundary between the perceiver and the perceived dissolves. There's not a heartbeat, there's not breath moving, there's not someone paying attention to it. It's all one experience of energy, of life force. Bring yourself up. Softly bend both knees, and then let's tuck the left foot to the outer right hip. So I'll face you, left foot to outer right hip. And then uh, the right shin could simply rest on the left thigh. It could sort of rest in front of that knee. Come to a, a as tightly knit cross-legged shape as you can get. So you might know it as cow face. That's what I'm after here. Uh, or in yoga, or yin yoga, they call it shoelace. So you could have a tightly tied shoelace like the cow face. That's what I'm going for. Or you could have a pretty loosely tied shoelace, something as open as feet way forward and shins crossed. 
Left leg's the underneath leg for me. That's what I'm going to reference. And then do what you can to simply allow the hips to unfold in this way. I'm a little weepy. Maybe you noticed. I think my cat's dying. So I'm dealing with that. And amidst all the pain of the world, it's important and in fact non-negotiable from the perspective of a practitioner, a spiritual practitioner, to hold presence in the center of your life mandala. I'm going to make it an I statement. It's important for me as a practitioner in the face of sadness and grief and difficulty to not collapse, to not resort to old coping mechanisms of numbing out or busying myself, but to include the pain and discomfort, to include the challenges of being present in the face of difficulty, and to merge or unify the dualistic mind of hope and fear into a single presence of this is it. And in this is also a beautiful sunny day, a healthy body, and I think a clear mind Got my beloved guardian, brown dog. I've got refuge. I've got food in the cupboards. There's flowers in the yard. All these things are also true. And to not believe the story that my mind tries to tell me that things are not perfect that things are not the way they should be because in fact they are otherwise they would be another way and then to stand or to sit in the center of my life mandala in the mix of all of this swirling to hold dear the The heart qualities or the divine abodes of empathetic, empathetic love and compassion and uh, empathetic joy and equanimity. The four qualities of the heart that are said to be not only a byproduct of the practice of success in practice, but a tool, tools to get us there. In Sanskrit, there are Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, and Upeka. Loving kindness, compassion, empathetic joy, and equanimity. torso towards the top leg, which for me is the right leg. Brown dog shifting on his bed.
So a lot of our work today will be focused on the side body. So begin to switch sides, which can take a minute. <laughs> um, starting symmetrically like we did, and then we'll work with side body for a bit, and then we'll end symmetrically. Left leg on top now. Take your time, entering side number two. As again, it has the first side to unwind and then its own stuff to deal with. And so here, Let's work with the Loma one, where the breath moves in phases on the inhale. So again, remember to invite the breath to come in at the Nasya Mula, root of the nose, high up. And maybe touching just the upper portion of the lungs and chest, upper back at first, and pause. Like suspend the breath in time, like a freeze frame. So you're using the diaphragmatic muscles, deep breath muscles, to pause the breath rather than your throat and your tongue. Keep those quiet and open. And then you sip a little more breath in and then sort of freeze frame the breath. Suspend, like hang time. <clears throat> and then sip in a little more and proceed in that way until you've filled. Pause at the top of the inhale. Pelvic floor is lifted through all of this, by the way. And then follow the exhale down like a waterfall, down the spine, down the hips to the earth. And if the heart rate's quiet, do it again right away. So each breath cycle could be Veloma 1, or you do one Veloma 1 cycle, and then if you found yourself winded, catch your breath and start over. Pelvic floor lifted, tongue, throat soft and open. So the back of the mouth, they call it the jiva guha in yoga, the cave of the tongue. The tongue like a sleeping serpent, back in its cave, down deep in the pit of the throat. And the tonsils have a lot of space if you still have those. Molars have a lot of space. And then slowly moving the breath into the Hridaya Guha, or the cave of the heart. And so entering the heart space with each increase of breath, each sip of breath, like you're taking another step back into the cave of yourself, in the dark mystery of your inner realms and the exhale pours down, down through the cave of the pelvis known as the Trika Guha. So these three major energy centers, head, heart, and belly in yoga have these cave-like descriptors as their abode. So big, dark, spacious places to explore internally with Maitri, with loving care, and Karuna, with compassion. Torso over the top leg again, to the right. Still working Veloma 1, if it's going well. And with that idea of empathetic joy. So empathetic joy for the parts of you that feel okay, for the 
fullness of your breath and equanimity towards whatever discomfort you might have in the hips or thighs. Gently releasing the discipline around the breath and bring your torso up. Untangle your legs. And then whatever you need to do to sort of motor that out. Motor it out or take a different shape. It could be yang or yin or you could just be quiet and still and pause. Whatever you need. And then we're going to take that bolster or couch cushion or stack of blankets and make um, place it crossways on your mat, so perpendicular. And I'm going to make mine a little bit higher by folding my blanket over it. You're probably going to want one block. Uh, and I'm going to, we're going to start on our right sides so I can face you. I'm switching my setup. So place the rib cage on the setup. Um, right leg, bottom leg long, straight down from your hips. Left knee tips to the floor in front of you. I got my left foot hooked on my right thigh. And then I'm threading right arm straight in front of me and You know, I might at some point let my head hang, but for now I'm gonna support it with a block. So we've invited extra length, extra spread in the left ribs, like opening them like a fan. It's my current favorite image for the uh, ribs. And then some extra length in the right outer hip, a little bit up into the right side waist. Lengthening left neck. And then what I invite you to do is left arm long. Extending, reaching, so a little yang in the arm. And then letting the left arm stretch long from the shoulder as it falls behind you or sort of hangs behind you. Mine is sort of landed on the bolster, but I have a lot of lengthening sensation through here. So let's let the arm with a little bit of yang reach and lengthen, but also sort of falling or hanging or suspending somewhat behind you. And then I feel this affecting me most in my front left ribs where it meets the abode of my stomach, spleen and pancreas there. So I'm gonna send my breath into that most congested feeling place. I'm also gonna lose the block under my head because I want more in my neck. I want it. And we're gonna move a little bit the left arm. So sweep it, and you don't have to, you can keep it there. Sweep it forward in front of you, so maybe it hovers over or can touch your right hand, right wrist maybe for a moment. And that brings the tug, the sensation up in a new place. I'm just gonna... Uh, Yeah, that wasn't supposed to be audible. It was just noise making. <laughs> so yeah, I feel this more in my back left ribs in a very specific place, actually. So if you can pretend, envision 
but you're just breathing in and out of the left nostril. And sweep the left arm towards the overhead position. Those fingertips may or may not be able to reach the floor. So the arm might be hovering. If it is, really reach it. So keep the yang in the arms. And now I'm looking for and feeling into the connection of upper left lengthening from left sit bone to left fingertips and lower right lengthening from right side waist to right ankle. And as you start to pull the left arm down, turn the arm out so palm can face forward like you're gonna bring your hand behind your head. My left hand is behind my head. And without turning the torso, squeeze left shoulder blade to spine so the left elbow can swing a little bit towards back body, similar to what we did in the beginning. And then breathe like you could breathe in your left armpit. Yes, all sorts of possibilities for the yoga practitioner. You can breathe in and out of your armpit. Try it. See, I told you. And then unfold the arm when you're ready back to the first position it was in. Mine goes there much more easily now. So I'm gonna take like three breaths here. So there's a little bit of internal rotation of the arm. The shoulder blade is retracted towards the spine, if not muscularly by gravity. And if we add a reach of the left fingers towards your feet, then it's depressed. Shoulder blade is, uh, is the movement, it's called depression. And then as you sweep the left arm in front of you, feel the shoulder blade wrap around towards the side ribs and any gesture of placing left hand on right hand, protracting the shoulder blade around the side of the ribs. And then as you sweep the left arm towards the overhead position, it rotates upward and it elevates, especially if you really reach Really reach, really reach, really reach. And then this final position of turning the arm, a little external rotation as you bring the hand behind the head and we're back to retracting the shoulder blade and downwardly rotating it as you reach towards your feet. Now, swing left knee up, bend right knee, push with left hand on bolster, up you come. OMG, <laughs> you can just flip over if you want, unless there's a screen that you have to keep facing, which maybe there is. I'm just flipping my gear over to the other side, starting over again. <clears throat> starting out with the block under my head, left leg long, look down, make sure it's straight down from the torso and then right knee draped over, right arm long by your side, slid a little bit behind you, reaching, 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 like a vector in physics. Did you ever take a physics class? It's like a point with a line and an arrow, indicating it's going forever. Let the weight of the arm, or maybe actively squeeze the arm to fall back. Shoulder blade retraction, downward rotation and depression. So in this scenario, we can go through all six of the movements of the shoulder blade and affect not only the shoulder, but the sutures of the side body, the fabric of the side body and then sweeping the arm slowly towards the left hand. I'm gonna lose the block. And then the right hand landing maybe on left hand. For me, it's my left wrist. 
because I don't want to twist the torso. I want to keep the pure side bend of the torso. It's actually not that easy. Because of the way the side body is the hem, it's the seam for the front and back body and whatever distortions we have between front and back pull on the side seam, just like a poorly made shirt or a poorly made <laughs> pair of pants. Sweep the right arm towards the overhead. And so follow the movement of the shoulder blade as it swings around the ribs and then actually towards the head as you reach the arm. So please don't pull your shoulder blade down your back when your arms are overhead. It's quite bad for the musculature uh, inferior to the shoulder blades below the shoulder blades. Generally speaking. If you ever want any more information about some of these anatomical details that I offer that can go against common cues in yoga, well-meaning cues but poorly informed cues, convenient cues, not accurate cues, please just reach out and I'm happy to talk about it. And then turn palm to face forward, so a little Rotation of the arm bone as you bring the hand back behind the head. And then if the elbow can tip back, it does so by way of the shoulder blade. So if the elbow can tip back, the shoulder head goes with it. The shoulder head doesn't dive forward because the shoulder blade is stuck. Move your shoulder blade, squeeze it back, squeeze it back, squeeze it back. <clears throat> And then as you unfurl the arm down again by your side, turn your arm into a vector and reach it, reach it long. And then press the hand down towards the floor behind you. Maybe it goes all the way. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Simply engaging is what matters. Simply engaging with care and compassion and the intention of bringing the most benefit to all beings. Sweep the arm forward. And there's all these degrees along the way degrees of movement that we often blur through, so no blurring, very clear. The choices are yours to make, I'm just a guide, tour guide. Sweeping the shoulder blade and the arm is just an extension of that. Forward and up and overhead with the shoulder blade. Get pulled by the arm with the shoulder blade. Stay in sync with the arm. Big reach, big reach, big reach. And then eventually rotating arm to point elbow to sky, hand behind head. <clears throat> and then dive elbow down as you pick up right knee and bring left knee in and come on up to sit <clears throat> i'm just going to pause in virasana for a moment and feel into the newly created newly cleaned cleared opened space around the heart, space inside the heart, space around the heart, space in the lungs, space between your tissues, space all around. How could we ever feel stuck? There's so much space. So with this higher bolster, 
Uh, turn it lengthwise with your mat. I'm going to flip my bolster over because I think it got a little squished in the middle with the weight of my torso on it. So counter pose for the bolster. Uh, blanket on the bolster to make it higher. So now the rest of our practice is going to be a back bend, a supported back bend that sort of grows in size. So I'm going to use the same belt for my legs. A little wider than my pelvis. And you could have that block nearby if you want support for your head. So I'm landing here now where my sit bones are just barely off the bolster. Timer set. And my head is also just barely off the bolster. So my neck is sort of following the contour of the edge of the prop. So yep, letting my head and forebrain tip back. It's a little more activating then it is suggested that it's more activating than like how we started where our head was supported forward, like frontal lobes bowing to the heart. Now the frontal lobes are in like sun salute. They're like, hello, space and light up and out. <laughs> and so for your arms, you could cross them on your chest like we started, or you could catch elbow, mm -mm, shoulder heads like we started and squeeze shoulder blades back. Elbows look for, reach for, maybe actually touch the floor. Or you could do feel, you know, whatever you need to do with your arms to make the soft but growing in size back bend doable, digestible. Maybe tolerable, but just tolerating something suggests a little bit of resistance. Like we don't really want it, but right. So if, we, if it's so subtle, the way we push back on things that aren't exactly how we want them to be, so subtle. So big care, big care, caring a lot what happens here. Now what I invite you to do with your breath is to let the inhales happen. You don't have to break them up like the normal one. But look for the first diagonal that I mentioned from collarbones to kidneys. So upper front to middle back. Breathe there first. And focusing especially maybe on, for you backbendy, happy backbender types, focus on the kidney expansion. And for those of you for whom backbends are really hard, can you focus on the collarbone expansion? And go for easy but complete, full inhales. And all the way to empty on the exhale. And if you can pause at the bottom of the exhale and relax everything. And what you might notice is that the belly suctions back. It's like vacuum packing the organs. And the front of the abdomen gets really long, uh, spreading front of the spine, lengthening. And behind all the organs, behind all the muscles of the front, deep in the low belly down to the inner thighs is your psoas muscles. So from here, I'm going to keep the belt on my feet, but I'm going to walk my feet in a little bit. Use your hands to pick up your head and swivel a little bit more off the bolster. So if you can have the edge of the bolster now like 
at the level of the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Tops of the shoulders, top of the back of the shoulder, actually touching the floor. So it's like a baby bridge pose or a supported Setu, Sambamba Setu Bandhasana restorative yoga style, if you know, if you know restorative yoga. This is a shape that's often offered. Now, if your lumbar is just like, no way, then please bend your knees and you can put your feet on either side of the bolster, like, and you could even knock your knees together. That'll make life easier on your lumbar spine. But if you can touch the bottom of those exhales and let the suctioning happen deep in the front, it just might invite the psoas muscles to let go and flow like a river down towards the groins, creating a little more space in the back lumbar spine. Just maybe. So full inhales, building soft and slow with the pelvic floor lifted. And long exhales where you pause and empty. And relax in the dark, quiet, still place of the Baya Kumbhaka, the exhale retention. Inhale from kidneys to collarbones. Put your focus where you need it. I already talked about that. You might have to push more right side, left side, lung. Exhale down the rivers along either side of your spine to the psoas, to the deep groins. Pause at the bottom of the exhale. You can stay here, or one more uh, back bend, a little bit bigger. So a couple options. You could put a block under your pelvis, on the bolster, on the blanket, which is what I'm going to do. So like supporting bridge pose or move the blanket and bolster out from underneath you and just put the block under your pelvis, so supported bridge pose. And I'm actually going to tuck my 10 toes under, which, man, you do, people, yogis, you do not have to do this. Uh, it works for me. 
It'll work for happy backbender types. Now, really important to send the breath down to the kidneys, down and back, before you take it up to the collarbone. So land the breath, low back ribs first. Maybe you keep it there, depending on what you feel. I need to keep mine there. Maybe some of you bring it higher. And then the same exhale, pause. The same exhale, pause. Okay, gang. Stay longer if you like. That was a 10 minute back bend. Easy ish, relatively speaking. We could just lay around and let it happen. <laughs> um, or you slowly disassemble. I vote probably just roll to one side. And you can stay curled up on that side and just rest there if you like, or roll over into Shavasana. You could use the bolster as a support behind your knees if you wish. You could also sit up in uh, meditation. In my mind, you're sort of primed. Uh, to receive very yin quality you're primed to receive breath receive rest receive life just as it is and so please do take good care and uh, Rest as long as you like. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you. I love you. Namaste.